Howdy folks, TJ here. Today is a little bit of a, hey, let's show off the box. Let's show off the XE Atari and chat about it a little bit. Now, I'm not going to do an unboxing because this was unboxed long ago. Uh, I never made a video about it, but uh, I've had my Atari XE in my back Atari room, which is more of a retro computer room and throw-it-all room uh, for both wife and I and anything that we just don't have a home for. It goes back there. But I thought I'd bring out my Atari XE today and uh, play with it, enjoy it, because it's been a while. I forget the last time I turned it on. What's cool is I actually own the proper color and design XE floppy drive for it, too, uh, which I should do a uh, video on in the future. In fact, it's been a while since since I've tested it, I don't remember when either, so who knows the disposition of it, uh, because normally I use my 1050s most of the time. Uh, the XC drive are a little bit more rare, a little bit more pricey, and I've got it undercover in there. Anyway, let's show off the box first, and then we'll uh, show off the XE also, and then I'll do a kind of a first boot in a long time uh, just to kind of see it boot up and make sure it runs, and then we'll call the video a wrap. So let me look at the front of the box first. Atari 130 XE personal computer, uh, 131,072 uh, bytes of random access memory. Kind of funny they had to spell out that whole 131,000. <laughs> Funny. Uh, compatible with all Atari peripherals and 65XE, which I owned before. And long ago, in a galaxy far, far away, I did sell my 130XE. I forget if it was boxed. I think it was. Uh, I don't know why I sold it. I just think at the time I thought I have a 130. What do I need a 65 for? But now that I'm kind of more into computers and having a full collection, which I'll never have a full collection of anything. Uh, yeah, I kind of wish I had it. But anyway, power without the price. So power without the price is an Atari slogan that I've always remembered because I've been an Atarian since 1980 when I purchased my Atari 800 computer-wise. Uh, so uh, so that's the front of the box. It, it's jiffy. It's red. Uh, it gives me a little uh, specky toast rack vibe because that box is also red. Uh, so that's the front of the box. Looks good. Actually a fairly small box compared to uh, the Atari 800 uh, older computer, which was a little bit bigger box. And it's a little bit more dense of a box, too. The, the box that the 800 came in is kind of thin, kind of flimsy, kind of like the 800 XL. This box, they went to a beefier design. It uh, looks like they spiffed it up a little bit. So that's the front of the box. Uh, side of the box, let's show you first. I'll show at a few different angles because I'm sure the glare of the light will be on there. Uh, let's see. Atari. The box contains a 130XE personal computer, an owner's manual, TV switch box and video cable, AC power supply, and a warranty card. Now, I don't know where my manual is and if I even have one. I'm not sure. Like I said, my back room is a little of a catastrophe. Uh, Atari Corp PO Box. Sunnyvale, California, 1985, made in Taiwan. Personal computer without the price. I'm guessing this side of the box, oh, this has got a serial number and stuff. So this side of the box has a little picture of a side. Does this one have a side? No, it doesn't. So this is kind of giving you a side angle what the Atari looks like inside. And it's got the serial number and 130XE. Uh, this side of the box, which I guess is the bottom, it's got the little, uh, stuff there, what do you call that, uh, accordion, uh, you flip it open and everything falls out, uh, so that's the bottom of the box, doesn't have anything, but the top of the box does have something, let's show you first, hopefully a few of these angles come in, and what does it look like, so it's got a barcode, and then Atari, and it says, Education, the powerful 130XE adds strength and versatility to your educational activities. Music Painter, a new educational program, offers a graphic introduction into the art of music composition. Learn to compose your own music with enjoyable graphics. So it shows a little picture of that. Then it shows Home Productivity. Silent Butler is a new personal productivity program offering a complete approach to personal finance management including automatic check writing and bank book balancing how many here still write checks 
mostly my wife, but my wife and I still sell checks. We have a few things on auto pay, but we're always month to month, so having things on auto pay uh, is a little harder because we don't always have to the money in the account so writing a check at our earliest convenience mailing it and it taking a few extra days behooves poor people like us so yeah that's what we do so i still write checks uh business a toy writer plus is a new enhanced word processor for the 130xc with a built-in spelling checker mail merge and 80 column editing hooked up to one of the new atari printers and you are the center of a sophisticated and efficient word processing system cool and then it uh has in smaller writing atari basic and all these uh numbers of atari things do these ring bells with you? Uh, Atari Rider Plus, 130XE, 65XE, XM301, XDM121, XMM801, XTC, Ecstasy. Ecstasy. <laughs> and who made that one? Ecstasy. Somebody was horny that day. Somebody wanted some spiffy action. Ecstasy 201. XTM 201, 800XL, and 1050 are trademarks, are registered trademarks of the Atari Corp. Kind of funny that they're still talking about the 1050, 1050 a floppy drive in this, but I think there was, there was always that time where they came out with a new computer, but some of the older peripherals were still there and still compatible, and so you got a mishmash of uh, older Atari. 400, 800 color, beige, whatever you call it, then the wider, blacker XL series, and then the more tanner, I'll call it, uh, light tan color of the XE series. So, cool. So that's that side of the box. I think I already showed it to you, didn't I? Uh, so it shows, yeah, I don't know how well this will come in, but that's the pictures. So, uh, that's it. Inside the box, I don't have any of the manuals or anything, and there's just a, a couple of uh, buns that your Atari uh, fits into nice and holds it in. Uh, if I ever find that stuff, I'll, I'll, I'll show it later. But anyway, oh, there's the back of the box. Damn it! There's more shit to talk about. Okay, 130XE personal computer. So there is a back of a box. Uh, we'll show a few different angles here. Okay, so uh, on the back of the box, it shows a big, full picture of the 130XE, and it is a sleek-looking, Atari ST-looking type of computer. I better see what time it is, because I've got an appointment. I think I've got time. Uh, I'm not going to read everything on the back of this verbatim anyway, but graphics modes it talks about for independent sound voices, more memory, 131,072, um, uh, built-in Atari Basic, a maximum system for minimum cost. They're always power without the price. That was Atari's shtick, right? Hardware expandability. The 130XE is 100% compatible with all Atari hardware peripherals. Uh, player missile graphics. I love player, mi player missile graphics. A full stroke keyboard. Spongy, but uh, it's there. It's kind of like the XCGS. It's like, ugh. Like a Dead Flesh keyboard on the specky, it's like Dead Flesh, and it's Halloween, so that's perfect timing. Uh, software compatibility, uh, special expansion capabilities, and uh, use the numerous cartridges in the slot. Uh, so let me read at least read the the big major stuff. I'm not going to read all this other stuff. That may bore you. This may be boring you, but that's okay. You don't have to watch the video. A maximum system for minimum cost. The 130 XE is the center of a powerful computing system. Whether you need a small business computer, a personal management center, or simply a place for the family to get together and have fun. Atari's all about the fun, folks. Uh, the 130XE is everything you need and at a very affordable price. Build a complete computer system around the 130XE uh, by adding state-of-the-art low-cost peripherals. <laughs> uh, and Atari 1050. So they were, this was, maybe I guess they, they hadn't had the XE colored, colorized, stylized, floppy yet because they're touting an Atari 1050 disk drive with Atari DOS 2.5. Uh, adds enhanced density capacity plus new 130XE RAM disk. There are a variety of Atari printers, the XTM201 and the Ecstasy uh, 201. The Ecstasy just gives you a little bit more pleasure. <laughs> That's funny. Ecstasy 201. I don't have any of those Ecstasy things. I have. I need the Ecstasy in my life, I guess. Uh, for um, Prince Color. Uh, that would be cool. I wouldn't mind exploring that now. I want to get a little Ecstasy in my life, damn it. Uh, 
Uh, for fast, high-quality dot matrix printing, choose an XMM801. And for business letters, you can use the XDM121 Leta Quality Daisy Wheel Printer. Gotta love those daisy wheels. There is almost no limit to your system. Add an Atari XM301 modem for telecommunications or a monitor for enhanced graphics resolution. And there are a variety of other peripherals, light pens, touch tablets, joysticks. Uh, that should go well with the ecstasy system. <laughs> My mind's in the gutter, folks. Um, keypads and game controllers, all available for 130XE. Discover the expanding potential of your Atari 130XE, trademark, uh, with quality built-in affordable Atari peripherals. So, very fun. Uh, you know, this was the last uh, toot of the horn with the 8-bit line for the Atari 130XE. So, I'm glad to own one, and it is basically the most powerful out-of-the-box Atari. Now, although folks may prefer expandability today of the 800XL, uh, there's a lot of things out there that you can use and to expand them, but I think pretty much every Atari you buy, you can practically boost it up and add all sorts of stuff and make it very powerful in this day and age. But for the time, the 130XE brought in that 131,000 whatever extra memory and it looked cool. It looked like an Atari ST. It's like a Volkswagen Beetle. It's the same thing from the 1950s all the way up. It looks like a Beetle, but they made little tweaks, little things, uh, and then they repackaged it and continued selling it forever until one day the 8-bit world just had to spit all over my glasses. Had to fade away, uh, but it's not faded away. It's now 2022, and people like me and you and everybody else still play with Atari 8-bits. Isn't that crazy? So now next, I'm going to connect it all up. Oh, we got to show it. No, I'll, I'll, I'll splice in uh, showing off the 130XE because I got an appointment I got to get to. And then we'll show it and then we'll connect it up and then we'll make sure it boots and then we'll call this video a wrap. So hold tight. All right, time to show off the actual computer. Atari 130XE made in Taiwan. So here's what the unit looks like. <clears throat> Mine's in pretty good overall shape. I would say the keys are a very slight yellowed, but then again, my eyes are not that great. Um, looks pretty dang good. I just said, um, I hardly ever, I don't say um too much. I have the pause of, ah, uh, like a lot of the Japanese folks do as you're contemplating things, but you ever watch a video where they, um, um, like, like, um, um, like all the time? I tend not to do that. I, I try to think myself as well communicated. Nothing saying that the people that are doing it are bad, but y y you need to find some other way to pause. <laughs> not that my eye uh, is good, but I think it's good because actually you see a lot of people that speak, especially in Japan, they have that ah uh, as they're contemplating, they're thinking things out. Anyway... <laughs> Here's what the front of the computer looks like, and it is a beauty. I mean, it has that aesthetic of an Atari ST, and it's got a nice Atari logo, 130XE, and it's got your help, start, select, option, reset key, and all your normal Atari keys. On this side, you've got some Atari joystick ports, and look at the sleek side profile. That is sexy. I love Atari. I've always loved the looks of Atari. There's angles and shapes and instead of just like the original Commodore 64, it's kind of like just the I know my Commodore friends are going to get pissed. <laughs> In fact, just so you know, I just attended a, a Commodore Amiga convention and I wore my Atari shirt. <laughs> but they're all friends and we didn't kill each other but it was kind of funny. Uh, anyway, here's um, joystick ports. On this side, there is nothing other than the pretty profile that you find with an Atari computer. On the front of it, there is nothing. You know, i got to say I love the old Atari 800 XL with four joystick ports right on the front. None of this side lingo. But the back of it's got all sorts of stuff going on. So let me just show a few different angles. Hopefully some of these pick up. So on the back, you've got your peripheral port for connecting all of your peripherals. You've got a cartridge port and an expansion port. And the cartridge port, you know what? I prefer sticking cartridges in the top. Back, you just have to kind of reach around and kind of 
your eyes aren't there, you gotta kinda reach around and hopefully everything guides in and pushes in. Where on the top you could always kinda peek in the little doors if you have to, cause not every cartridge slips in easy. But anyway, uh, cartridge. The expansion port, I think the only time I've ever done anything with that, I had on my, maybe XEGS? I forget, I don't think I have any expansions that utilize that port in any way, shape, or form. Monitor port here, and then Atari uh, or a, a TV selector with the RF, which is what I'm going to use, and a power supply and an on-off button. So that's the backing in, and then the bottom is just an Atari butt or bottom. Uh, although, is that the butt? Is this the butt? <laughs> so that's what it looks like. This is a 130. XE, very pretty computer. Now let's go ahead and connect it up to my big screen TV back here. Turn it on for the first time for a, in a long time. And the only cartridge I had, and I'm thinking you have to use the gun for Jungle Hunt, so I won't be able to play it, but I'm just going to stick a cartridge in to make sure it boots up. Uh, I had, because you can't do light guns on an LCD, right? So anyway, at least we'll see a video and then we'll wrap up the video. Hold on. All right, I plugged in the cartridge. It actually went in nice and smooth. I think the newer XE design color cartridges do slip into the back pretty well. But anyway, let's go ahead and turn it on. Uh, not going to play the game, like I said, but let's at least see if it boots up. So, three, two, one. Hey, all right. Jungle Hunt. Tattoo. Tattoo. Potato. <laughs> Potato. Uh, 1983, option regular, so, uh, you know what's funny, my XE is from 1985, it said, and this is an 83 game. Anyway, let's just hit, uh, see if it actually starts, I don't know, is there a uh, reset, start, start. Oh no, maybe this isn't joystick one. Maybe I'll pl slap in a joystick and try to play quick. Hold tight, hold tight on, uh, I gotta turn it off. Where's my nearest joystick? Uh... I'm gonna go into the other room, just hold tight. Don't move. Don't move. You're moving. Don't move. There's a joystick. My arcader. Oh, this room's. This room, I'm surprised I'm coming out alive. It's alive. <laughs> Rather than edit this stuff out, this is just me being an idiot. Uh, uh, which one's joystick one? Uh, We'll try this one. Okay, we're going to try using the Arcator joystick. Uh, let's go ahead and start it back up. Okay, that's good. Uh, you gotta, you got to find the start button. It's a little tricky. The lighting. Uh-oh. Oh, sh oh, I did jump. Jump. It's like, oh, I'm getting a dog barking now. Oh, shit. I'm dead. You hear the dog barking? <laughs> oh, no. Okay, jump like a dickens. Oh, I kicked ass. Okay. Oh, shit, I died. <laughs> the dog bark. One more time, and then we'll call this a quit. Uh, this is kind of fun. I don't think I've ever played this game before. Oh, shit! Okay, I'm dead. <laughs> so, that's official. Atari 130XE booted, running, dog barking. Hopefully you enjoyed this uh, video. Have a nice weekend. It's Friday right now. Bye.